My sister was born with a rare genetic illness called glycogen storage disease, and it was an illness that affected her liver, her heart, and her muscles. So when she was five, she had a liver transplant, and when she was 27, she had a heart transplant. She's had ongoing issues throughout her life because of her illness. I'm Melissa, and this is Junior. When he was born, I was like the happiest kid. I think he was around maybe four or so. He was falling a lot. Eventually, after a lot of testing, um, he was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We saw more of the symptoms that they described for this disorder. Eventually, he just couldn't uh, keep his strength up, and that's when he went into his wheelchair. We're going to do everything possible to make it for Junior to live a long life. We'll be there for him. They see the parents and they say, oh, the parents do a lot of work for this kid and you don't realize that the whole family is doing a lot of work. It's really on me to take a lot of responsibilities around the house. You can't really control what happens in other people. You can't control what other people do. So sometimes you just have to go with it, even if you don't really want to deal with it. You have to, have to do it because sometimes um, a good thing comes out of something bad. At the University of Guelph, I'm majoring in aging and health, which has probably stemmed a lot from caring for my grandfather for my whole life. He moved in with us when my grandmother died, and I would have been just a baby, so my whole life, pretty much, he's been there. People don't understand what a young care is. It's not a common term yet, and often young carers themselves don't identify as a young care until someone explains to them what it is, and they can connect it to their own situation and say, oh yeah. Over the years, he's had, you know, different surgeries. He's had hip replacement, he's had cancer, he's had surgery on his eyes, um, and he, he is slightly disabled in his legs, so he needs help walking some of the time, but for the most part, it's just kind of more hanging out with him. He's, he's really clear-minded and, and a lot of fun and very smart, so, so it's, it's really nice spending time with him. Young carers are children, youth, and young adults that are living in homes with a family member who has an illness, a disability, a special need of some kind. Sometimes it's a mental health issue or an addiction, maybe a cultural language barrier that they help their family navigate. My mom and dad immigrated to Canada in the early 80s and they struggled to integrate or immerse themselves fully in Canadian culture. So from a very young age, a lot of responsibilities around the house fell on me, answering important phone calls, uh, paying bills, or helping to pay bills rather, um, helping my parents get their high school education. There's me and my little sister who are, I guess, normal for lack of a better word. And then my brother has a bunch of different stuff going on with him. Um, it's not like a violence as in he really has control over it necessarily. It's more like there's brain chemistry that doesn't work out the way it should. Parents don't really catch you doing stuff as much because they're always focused on the other person. Being the oldest, I think there was sometimes more uh, pressure on me to kind of like in a sense, run the household, I guess, because my parents were so preoccupied with my brother and whatnot. I resented um, the responsibilities and uh, the commitment of being a young care. I didn't like it being thrust on me. You sacrifice a lot, you know. There's times you go to school in the morning and you have not slept because he was up all night screaming about whatever. There's just like a lot of like loneliness, I guess, in that. It's like your problems matter, but there's just no time for them to matter. Sometimes my mom treats me like I am a little bit younger than I actually am because she's used to dealing with my brother and always have to be careful because she never knows when he's about to explode. When he is upset, I kind of get mad and I don't really like him because I don't know what I did, but he's just getting mad at me. So I just kind of like get mad and I go upstairs and then he gets even more mad at me. I love him, he's my brother. I mean, like, he is a good brother when he isn't mad. I always thank God that I have Melissa Forrest and not Junior. Because she is there. 
Doesn't matter where she go and I send her a message, I send her a text, or I call her. She will drop everything and she will be here. Just kind of like attacking mother for me. She know how hard it is for us to look after Junior, like one person cannot do it. It is tough, but you need to think about who are you doing this for? So I do it because he's my brother. I love him, so I obviously I'm gonna do it for him. I don't think I would be doing what I do today if it wasn't for him. A lot of young carers end up growing up and going into helping professions, for example, and uh, you can see why that would happen. As I got older, I kind of, um, kind of started working with children with special needs, and then I realized that's really what I like, and, and looking back on it, Growing up with him is what inspired me to do that. So now I'm an educational assistant working with kids who have special needs. It's not not so challenging, I think, when it's just something you've grown up with. And it's probably made me a more understanding and more patient person, especially with older adults, which is one of the reasons I decided to major in aging and health. I would like to have my career in, in working with older adults. They're used to being able to respond to other people's needs, being able to be understanding about those things. When I was younger, I definitely resented it. Growing up now, I learned how to be independent. I learned how to uh, take care of myself, and not just myself, but other people. So it was an experience I wouldn't live without. There will be a lot of times when you kind of question uh, your ability to handle it. There are times when it's like really dark and you think like, what, like what what's the outcome gonna be we just want to be heard sometimes even like it's not even like oh i want you to change my situation i don't i know you can't change my situation but i just want to be acknowledged and for you to know that like this is hard for me too it's helpful to talk to other people with my friends they know that i have a brother like that so when they see me coming to school when i'm upset they kind of just like ask what's wrong and like oh, nothing, then they're just like, okay, well, what can I do to help? And that kind of stuff make me feel a bit better. At the end of the day, what young carers need are just what everyone else needs, strong role models and uh, support systems. A lot of times it feels like you're alone in this, and I think that, you are, first of all, you aren't. There are needs for young carers, there are impacts, and we want to do something to address those and to reach out to them and to create a community where people can understand what they're dealing with and be there for them and learn how to support them. Sometimes it's, it makes people uncomfortable and they, they'll turn a blind eye or, or something, but it's nice, nice when people can pitch in. You're not alone. There's a lot of other people like you. You just have to find someone to talk to because if you keep it inside too long without talking to people, trust me, I know from experience, it does not work out well. It is just terrible. You have to talk to someone to feel better. I want to uh, finish my degree, maybe go on and get my master's. I want to go traveling. At one point, it didn't seem like those dreams were a reality and now it does feel like that. In a few years, I might not be living here anymore um, because I'm gonna get married and move out. It's gonna be weird not coming home and having Junior at home. But that being said, I probably will just be down the street anyways to be able to, for my parents to call me if they need help. I want my family to be happy and I want them to be proud of me. Yes, I would love for Junior to be able to walk one day but at the same time, I'm kind of grateful for the experiences that I've had because it's taught me so much and it's shaped who I am. We're not giving up no matter what because the love and the understanding Junior have, everybody love him and that's what keep him going. On the way to prom. They gave me all the love in you. My experience of caregiving for my grandfather has probably been more positive than anything. It's been fun and rewarding and uh, I love it. I couldn't imagine not living with him. Don't lose hope. Just keep at it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs>